Hey guys, this is Introducing Emmy, and we're back with another Red Line Tuesday. This one is by Hamish from thatiswellshameful.tumblr.com. And uh, this is actually, uh, I forget her name. She's really iconic, but she's from uh, Kill Bill. So, but that doesn't really matter because we are drawing her. I'm the only one who's important right now. So, I'm going to do some quick flipping. I actually hadn't had a chance to look at it backwards. You can tell it's backwards because of the signatures facing the opposite direction there. But um, you can kind of see like the head is warped a little bit. That's the big thing that sticks out. So I'm actually going to work on it flipped for a little while. Uh, just because while I was sitting a video up, as usual, I've been staring at it too long in one direction. And it starts to like like your vision like it's used to it and you don't see the problems as well anymore so uh, I'm just gonna do uh, where's my I'm gonna turn the smoothing up just a little bit Gonna kind of figure out where to lay body out under these clothes. Now they were using uh, a reference, but um, I don't want to like fix their drawing based on a, a reference. I want to fix their drawing based on their drawing. So that is what we are gonna do. And let me make this a little lighter and a little more saturated. I had it turned lower, a little less saturated because I was having trouble seeing the, the lines of the jacket through that. And I'm going to use the eyes, the nose, and the mouth to kind of figure out the overall angle that I want everything to lay. So already the big thing that sticks out with the arms is that they are different lengths. Let's, um, first of all, let's decide where they would lay, like this arm is, I think about the correct length. It, usually the ends of your fingers fall a little longer than the mid, like the midpoint of your thigh. So that's okay. That gives us our elbow. So here you have to remember that the arm is going to be a little foreshortened. So you just want to bring this little area. Let me get a little closer here. Little closer. <laughs> so you want to bring uh, this arm, this uh, with that upper arm. That's the forearm, right? I always, I don't know why, but I when I say forearm, I always think it's like the upper arm, but whatever. So anyway, you want to bring this up just a teeny bit, this line here, so that it gives this appearance of being foreshortened because um, your elbow is going to be right you know right in there and you don't want the elbow falling any lower and you don't want the uh, the arm to fall any lower else it's gonna it's gonna give this like appearance of being a really long arm so um, I'm gonna go back just a little bit and we're going to Draw the line for the chain. Uh, 
this is going to be like the space that all these chains gathered together take up. And I'm going to draw them hanging straight and a nice unbroken curve. Do some little feeties. So I'm going to actually make the uh, sleeves a little narrower just to get some interesting negative space like right in there. Let's put some nice flare on the jacket. Remember if you're unsure about these curves, draw through your Your jacket shape. So I realize that this is not um, like an ultra realistic looking Uh, fan art for this character. She's kind of um, like chibi or super deformed or however you want to say that. Which is also the reason I didn't want to work um, from the reference because I would feel too like pressured to try to like get her into that like try to squeeze this character's proportions into the box of, of realism like I'd much rather just like work on what you've got going because it's like way cuter it's way cuter than any photograph. Um, <laughs> deciding where the socks need to go. Oh wow, I didn't realize you had the knees so high before. Let's take the socks down a little lower. I think this is where they're supposed to be. Remember that the the knees will bulge a little bit, but generally they should fall at the narrowest part of the leg. That's why I was a little confused there. So like, um, this is not the most attractive leg, but that is about where. where your knee would be. That's kind of awkward. <laughs> Anatomy on the uh, the foot there kind of looks like a hoof, but that's all right. But I hope the, the 
point is clear. Let me just clean this up a little bit in here. Okay. Go a little lighter. And uh, let's do the face or the head. I think I'm going to kind of do my trick of drawing one side and then flipping it over. I actually never uh I never uh draw the top lip. I just I don't know. Weird like thing that I've gotten into, but I might draw it from now on. I kinda like the way it looks. Well not for like everything, but I may experiment with drawing the upper lip because I think it looks neat. So yeah, good old cheaty flip in the face kind of thing here. Don't want it to be that angled. All right, let's straighten this back up. I'm just trying to um, sort of push the hair out a little bit right here because her head is kind of at an angle so it wouldn't fall like straight this way. You know what I mean? So like I'm trying to um, push it out a little more that way. Alrighty. So I'm going to... going to kind of go in here and clean up a little bit of this madness so that we can do some more on the top.
All right, you should still be able to see some in there, but it's going to be a lot, um, a lot cleaner, a lot easier to see, I think. Yeah. Okay. So some of the other things that they wanted me to look at was, um, like just stuff about the clothing. So like. This is something that I used to do um, when I was first getting into drawing suits. You know, it's funny, I have so many characters with suits who wear suits, where suits is like the main fashion thing, and I'm so bad about, I was so bad about drawing suits. Like, I never just took like a few days to like learn what the hell I was doing. So what I recommend is opposed to doing like something like this, which I still do for like sketches, I'm bad about that, but I recommend doing more like a diamond. Or maybe like an arrowhead sort of shape um, so that you don't lose the curve of the uh, this is just like a blazer yeah okay so you don't lose like the the curve of the jacket like wrapping back up around the shoulders um, and if you have um, lapels which uh, she doesn't but if you did have lapels, it kind of makes it a little easier to um, lay in different types of lapels and things like that. So, yeah, it looks a little neater. It helps you kind of visualize the wraparound and all that. Just put a nice bow. Little floppy bow. And then, wait, which side? <laughs> I don't know which side the, uh... So, she's only got two buttons, wow. Okay, so one button here, because that's where the tension is going to be. See where the jacket comes down and opens? If the button was higher, it would probably open up higher, so try to keep the buttons like right where you get that join at least the, the the two end buttons and now if she had more buttons then you'd want to go in and you know add more buttons but if she only has two then she has two and that's about where they would be on this little cartoony drawing and I like to just usually put like one or two little shadows in here for like where you might get a few little wrinkles. Um, she's wearing a pretty neat and tidy little blazer. It's probably irons. So there wouldn't be like extreme wrinklage or anything. All right, and then um, she has a pleated skirt, and pleats are fun. Let me um, put a little more blue down so that we can see a little easier here. Okay, I've gone over pleats in other videos, but you know, one more time. So pleats are essentially like if you look at a skirt from the bottom up, don't recommend, you're going to get slapped, but if you do, <laughs> pleats uh, are kind of like repetitive chain work and they come and like you can do pleats any sort of shapes from the bottom. What's important though is um, how it gathers and that's where you get like the the um, the shape you know the kind of curves or the the chain work sort of. I'm trying to think of a good word other than chain it's it's pleats, you know, it's like those decorative folds that give you the pleated skirt look. So, yeah. So, 
What's important is how it gathers, but don't forget to draw your interiors like that. Okay, because that's that's going to give it its depth and make it look like real pleats, okay? So let's just rewind a little bit. But here, um, she has pretty square or like Z-shaped uh, pleats. So what I recommend maybe is doing kind of long dash for the outside of the pleat and then short dash curving the other way for the inside. And this should help sort of like space it out neatly. You want the pleats to be a little wider where her legs are pushing the skirt apart. So then this edge of the skirt is this edge of the pleat, and then up like that. So in here is where it's connecting, but you can't see that because the, the fold of the pleat is over top of it. Something like that. It's a little muddled in there, I apologize. And that will be your skirt. And if you want, I don't like to draw the pleats going all the way up into the skirt. That's a little too kind of ridiculous for me. I, I just, I'm not feeling that. But if you'd like to have maybe the tops of the pleats up here so that you can see like kind of where it would connect and sort of let the uh, the viewer's brain fill in. I think that's okay. I think that like makes it look all neat and tidy and everything. So so there you go. And if you want like a more curvy pleat, what I what I would do, honestly, if I was doing this, I'm so comfortable drawing pleats, I would probably just go in and kind of chain work something and then draw the, the connecting lines. But if you're not, sh like, you're still not sure, like, how much overlaps and stuff, I would do kind of this dashed line thing. But if you wanted to go more curvy, something like that, just make these more, like, half circles. So, like, do something more like this when you're going around. It takes practice to kind of get a feel for like how much or how little they need to overlap each other. But uh, if you're ever like bored, like when you're on the phone or something and you're like a doodler, do like stuff like this and then pretend this is like a gathered pleat somewhere and just start trying to like work this out. This is also good if you're drawing like coral or like kind of alien plants or you know, there's lots of like things in nature that kind of have this thing going on and then like shade to break up your planes and stuff. So that's good for that kind of, like if you're bored on the phone, <laughs> you can practice your unusual pleats. Okay. Um, and then for the hand, I would actually, uh, put more of a bend. I like doing like really uh, flexed wrists. So like rather than it kind of just, eh, you know, I like to, foof, foof, especially if it's like a character that's going to go into a fight or something, I like to have really over the top matte wrists. So here, like rather than just how it's like, eh, I would like push it down or push it up more. In fact, I think I will. I should have made this a little bigger <laughs> when I went to.
So something like that. This wrist actually, or this hand I should say, looks a little long. I'm going to let it fly though. Okay, and that actually, that affects where that ball is going to lay. Hold on, I'll go over to it in a second. Man, I had, sorry, a little off topic while I draw on the shoes. I had a headache, not even a headache, I had a migraine and started like yesterday afternoon sometime. And I'm actually lucky, I haven't had a, a, a migraine in a really long time. Um, I used to get them almost every week for a while there. I don't know, they just kind of like decided no more and... I didn't have one for a long time, and I just had one yesterday afternoon, and it wouldn't stop, and I was getting, like, really fed up, and I was taking aspirin, but aspirin doesn't really work for me for headaches, or for migraines, I mean, it works for headaches and not my migraines, so I found a thing in Naprox, and I was like, yes, and I just found it before I started recording, and I took it, and I was like, Ugh, I, you know, I don't have time to sit around and wait for this to kick in. I'm just gonna like just work through the pain and uh, I'm actually really impressed. It That's a really bad hand. <laughs> I'm like Ugh. I'm actually really impressed it kicked in pretty fast here and I think I've been recording for yeah about half an hour almost and that's that's usually about how long it takes to kick in, so I'm pleased with that. But uh, whenever my migraines start to go away, especially if I've had them for like more than 24 hours, which this was nearing <laughs> the 24 hour mark, like when the migraine finally goes away, you almost feel like euphoric or you get these, It it's like the lack of pain is almost like a drug in itself. You're just like, ah. Oh, so relieved. <laughs> okay. The only thing I'm not really feeling is this foot. I think it's a little big. It's a little flappy and duck looking. I don't know. I'm gonna kind of make it a teeny bit smaller. Okay, so for um, chains, what I recommend doing is, um, if you're working digital, doing a brush, because it's just going to make your life that much easier. And now, and I'm trying to rem remember, I don't remember if she has a, um, if the chain on her uh, mace morning star flail thing is if they're round or oval but I will try to make this like make this happen for you this is like my old chain brush which I need to get rid of it because it's not really accurate but a uh, really easy way to make chain brushes or any kind of um, let's go 300 dpi let's do a square I believe you need to have a square canvas so we'll just do 500 pixels so to do chains, <laughs> I love that. To do chains, what I recommend is you can either have a filled in chain or a not filled in chain. I'm going to not fill in my chain. So I, just to show you guys how this works. So let's do, one link okay so that's like one circle and then this is the adjoining link and you need to make sure that this adjoining link is the same like length approximately as the other one and then so let me erase in here this is not going to be the most beautiful of 
brushes that I've ever made, but hopefully you will get the points. And for funsies, let's add a little more black. Let's like do a drop shadow and like a little reflection or something. All right, I'm doing this like very fast and loosey goosey. Okay. So that's not what I want. Okay, so there's our chain. We've just drawn it, and then we're gonna go to. Um, I should also say this: your canvas just needs to be square, and I like to go to 300 DPI just for the hell of it. So we're gonna go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and we're just gonna name this Test Chain. So there's our brush. Okay, but that's not a chain. So <laughs> what you want to do is go to Window, Brush Pre, oh, not Brush brush there we go and hopefully you guys can see this let's go to shape dynamics and so no size jitter we'll take the minimum diameter up to like 95 um, And then let's do our spacing so we can actually see this thing. Okay, you see how it's like forming a chain there? That's too far. Okay. I'm going to turn smoothing off. Turn off the um, the roundness jitter, by the way. I Sometimes that's set and sometimes it's not. It's a little, like, eh, whenever it does. I don't know why it, like decides that. And then uh, we're actually going to test chain final. That should, yeah. Okay, so now it's going to work. Let me delete the first one we made. Okay. It's so huge that I'm having trouble here. It's too big. So big. <laughs> so something like that. Now I'm overdrawing. That's okay. Oh, yeah. I think my tablet is kind of close to death, so it's having some problems keeping up with me, but... Yeah, I'm thinking this is the the way to do it. It may take a little bit of um, like kind of messing with it to get it just how you want it. And also, if this chain is too big, will bite me. <laughs> but you can go in and make it smaller, or bigger, or whatever. So that's kind of a quickie way to make like chain brushes and stuff. And I will. Uh, I don't know, I'll make this like blue so it's different. And I'll just put some white behind it. But I don't recommend like inking. Uh, this way, like using like a brush to ink with, like for the chains. I used to do that when I was younger. I don't really do that so much anymore. What I do now is that I would use this like to sketch so that everything stays nice and even and consistent. And then I would like go in here, like you can see like right 
right in here the brush got a little wiggled or something like it just wasn't staying with me so like right in here I would go in and correct like little things like that and kind of unconfusify these sort of areas um but I wouldn't really use something like this to ink anymore unless I was like in a dire rush and I had to like give an example to somebody or show somebody something like really really fast so yeah no don't do that anymore just take your time and then for like objects like this remember draw through I'm not even sure what what this is all supposed to look like, so patience with me, young ones. Um, the other question I had was on shading, I believe. Um, and that's why I left this shadow. Oh, I should mention that this originally all had a red background, but it was a little hard on my eyes, so when you're doing um, shading, what I would recommend, first of all, like if you're going to do a shadow under a character, don't do this. <laughs> Remember that, um... oops, let's just turn off all that. Remember that your character is, you know, not a blob, unless your character is a blob like Lumpy Space Princess, then disregard. But what I like to do for simple characters with simple shadows on the body to begin with is kind of like like a peanut or barbell shaped shadow. So you sort of get that, you know, you get that implication that she's like a, an upright object casting a straight down shadow. Now this is if your light source is above. If, if your light source is coming from a different angle, that's a whole other tutorial, but I'm trying to be sort of quick about this. And then we'll do like a little one for the, the ball. But then um, I can just barely see what you're going for there. I'm going to um, actually go over your shadows. I'm, I'm going to use purple. Uh, you don't have to use purple. You can use whatever shadows color you want. But I'm going to use purple so that you can see it okay. Um, so let's do the skirt, which skirt comes close there and then starts to fall away. I am going to paint outside a little bit. So closer there, fall away. For knees, I like to do kind of like that little arrowhead shape again. I think it's cute. And I also like to put like a little bit of shadow on the insides of objects. So like here I would put a shadow. So, hand's going to cast a shadow. thinking I should be I should be doing this on mine and not the uh, the original <laughs> it's kind of close <laughs> uh, it's gonna be kind of a long one today guys sorry I'm gonna go under the chain in fact I'm gonna turn the chain off for now just so it's like not in the way off too. Okay.
So I like to do shadows on the interiors of my pleats, and this is kind of a preference thing. Some people do like hyper realistic sort of pleat shadows, and we'll try to like like figure out like how far the shadows would come and things like that. Uh for like a drawing like this where it's like pretty oh I don't know, my phone just turned on. Hi phone. Hi phone. I don't know what's doing. But uh for a simplified drawing like this I would try to keep the shadows a little more funzy. I wouldn't get too like hyper realistic shading or anything like that. I'm kind of a funzy shadow person anyway, so like um So like for her bangs, I would totally like put this all in shadow. Now in trying human, because I have so many pages to do and stuff, um, one thing that I always do to kind of get around over complicating shadows um, from the head is I kind of do like a diamond <laughs> on the neck and then that will be the cast shadow from the head. I used to try to get really like like trying to figure out the shape of the head and the exact shadows that it would cast and things like that but I only do that for like drawings for trying human that are kind of like go in the art book or something but I don't know. I feel like this is kind of like all you need to say, hey, her head is casting a shadow. Her head is an object. So there's those teeny shadows we talked about earlier on the, uh, the jacket. I usually like to put a little shadow like where the shoulder kind of comes over top of the sleeve a little bit. Maybe a little shadow at the wrinkle there. I'm not sure if well, her hair wouldn't be back there, but I'm going to put a little shadow there just to show some negative space. Yeah, no, let me get rid of that. Might get too confusing. Put some shadows on the buttons. This is a fun one. I might ask her permission to see if I can finish this. Or his. Sorry. I don't, I don't actually know who Hamish is. I shouldn't be presumptuous. There we go. And for fun. Just do like a little
So there you go. That's kind of like how I would do my shading. Um, but for this kind of a drawing, I would try to keep things pretty um, simple and kind of lighthearted. Uh, I wouldn't get too like, oh my gosh, I have to make this look as realistic as possible because like for a character like this, she's uh, and, and I know this wasn't something that you were necessarily addressing in your email that you sent to me, um, but I just, like, f for viewers in general, for, like, such a iconic character like this, I wouldn't, like, you know, be busting down the door trying to, like, make her look really realistic. But I, you know, so, like, the shading I would keep pretty simple and I wouldn't stress out too much about it. I think she looks really good for just, you know, like simple shapes and stuff. And I actually never even flipped it back <laughs> because I'm a good person. So this is the way it's supposed to face. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay, so... <laughs> Sorry. Um, I guess I could turn the chains back on. And I realize that ball is like a little off. It's not centered on the uh, the chain correctly. It should be more like, like that. So yeah, I think we uh, we made some pretty meaty improvements here. I might have made her a little too evil looking. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that some of this helps. I think uh, she's got her feet a little more on the ground now and stuff. Well, I think I'm going to call it for this one. As always, if you're interested in Redline Tuesdays, you can, and you don't mind the wait, you can send them to emmy.bittner at introducingemmy.com with Redline Tuesday in the uh, subject. And if you're like, no, I need this to be looked at right now or like within a few days, um, I'm doing these for a fee now for 15 if you need them like right this minute. So I've had a few people utilize that. And if you want me to record it uh, for Redline Tuesday, just let me know and I'll do that. You know, you don't have to pay extra for it to be recorded for as an episode of Redline Tuesday. But um, if you don't want to record it, just let me know and I won't do that. So uh, yeah, alrighty then. That will be it for today and I will see you guys next time. Bye.